Welcome everyone, Farmer Cop here. This is gonna be part two of my guide to precision farming on Farming Simulator 22. In this video, we're gonna cover pH values and applying pH as well as variable rate seeding. Uh, make sure to check out the first video in this series if you want more information on soil types, soil sampling, buying soil maps, understanding soil maps, and RTK stations. I would recommend going through the series in order. Um, that's just me though, you guys do whatever you want. But anyhow, down below in the YouTube slider bar, if you're looking for a specific portion of this tutorial, you should be able to skip ahead to exactly that. To start off, we're gonna talk about pH values. So first, you obviously need to either soil sample the ground or purchase a soil map. I have purchased a soil map on the field we're on right here. 33 is what we're gonna be working with. So we can see the different soil types. We have a little bit of loamy sand, some sandy loam, and we have some loam here. So no silty clay actually, which is quite nice. Um, so now that we have this, we're gonna talk about the pH values. We scroll through here, we have pH, nitrogen, yield, seed rate, back to soil types. Under the pH values, there are ideal values for each individual soil type. These are the values that we have set right here. Now, the pH value is ideal for each uh, soil type. 6.5 for sandy loam, uh, 6.0 for loamy sand, 6.75 for loam, and silty clay at 7.0. Those are the required uh, pH values. So um, another thing we can check too, is we should be able to, if you have field info on down there in the bottom right-hand corner, it has a pH value that says good on there, 6.25 out of 6.5 for sandy loam. Um, if we go over to here to where we have some loam, pH is bad, it says, 6 out of 6.75, so you need to apply some. And then also has the nitrogen level down there. Now, the nitrogen level we're going to talk about more in a future video, but the reason it's not showing good, bad, or anything else is because nitrogen value is tied directly to the crop type. So we don't know uh, what crop or it doesn't know what crop is going to go here, so it doesn't know what it is. And also down there in the bottom right-hand corner under precision uh, farming, it also says the soil type. So loam there, and then obviously sandy loam over here. So when applying pH, um, all you have to do is get any lime spreader. So in the store, you can buy lime spreader just like you would anywhere else um, or in any other type of game. You can just come in here and buy ones that have lime, and that's what you're going to use to spread your lime down, which is going to up your pH value. That's how you up your pH is uh, by adding lime. You can't lower the pH value other than growing crops and harvesting them. That will slowly reduce the pH value over time. Now, a couple other things to note. Um, it does say in the help menu that it recommends doing uh, the pH or the lime every three harvests and more often if needed, essentially. So um, I recommend doing it every time because it doesn't take as much, but if the pH values are good, then you might as well not do it. But if you have any bads anywhere and different soil types will lose pH at different levels and such like that. So it just kind of varies, but um, I just usually do it every time just because it doesn't take that much. Now, if you're used to liming a field in base game, you're going to be like, well, I don't want to lime it any more often than I have to because it just burns through lime. Well, and this one, it's not going to burn through lime like it did before. Um, it only applies down exactly what it needs to and it doesn't apply anywhere near as much as it used to. We actually hop into here, up there in the upper left hand corner, you can see a pH value and lime application. I'm gonna open the full help menu so we can get a little bit more information here. So as you can see, I have 18,950 liters of lime in this bad boy down in the bottom right hand corner. Up in the upper left hand corner, you can, there's an option on there that says, um, deactivate automatic application right at the very top. So if I hit that, I have to change it manually and then you can say K and M are on there to change application rate. So I can use K and M. You can see down there the bottom right hand corner or the bottom left hand corner, the very bottom of the help menu, I can lower it and raise it. But I'm gonna leave it to automatic, which is what I'd recommend you do. Now, as we pull out onto the field, I'm gonna turn this on. As we get out on the field, you can see it is applying uh, the pH right down there bottom left hand corner you can see the map as it's going and it also tells you on the lime application how much it's actually using now if you know lime from again base game it applies it very quickly you can see we're still at 99% because it doesn't need a lot of lime here um, but then again if we go over to where the pH value is bad over here we'll head right over here where it says it needs a lot that's bad I suppose right here a lot more you can see our value is going down much faster down there in the bottom uh, right hand corner our line value is going down much faster still not that quick but much faster than it did before so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to line the entire field to get it to be ideal and you can hire a worker to do this which is probably what i'd recommend doing so and um, we're going to go ahead and go about that but yeah that's essentially how you're going to get your ph value to where it needs to be and i would recommend doing this before you plant any seeds or anything on a field or plant any crops but it's not necessarily a requirement to do it in that order this is just kind of the ideal and best order i think uh, to go about doing precision farming stuff but anyhow i'm going to get this field limed and then we're going to talk about variable rate seeding all right so our ph value should all be perfect right around here you can see 6.75 out of 675 perfect 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 Look in here, everything looks good there. So everything should be perfect, good to go, which is fantastic. So now we're going to talk about variable rate seeding. So we are going to use a direct drill seeder for this one because we haven't done anything to the field. 
and two, because when you talk about environmental scores, which I go into a lot more detail later in a future video, um, this is gonna be the best way to get the best environmental score. So as far as variable rate seeding goes, um, you seed using a direct drill again for minimum tillage, and I'll have more info on that in the future. Different soil types and crops require different seed quantities. So I'm gonna put a chart up on your screen right now. That is kind of the chart that shows off the different crop types that this is gonna work with, which is gonna be wheat, barley, oats, canola, corn, sunflower, and soybeans. Um, so those are the crops that this will actually matter. Otherwise, it's not gonna matter past that. And when applying seed, um, you're gonna to wanna to try to meet those different um, sections for those different crops depending on the, the field and, or excuse me, the soil type and everything like that. But if we hop into our tractor here, up there in the upper left-hand corner, we're gonna go ahead and just turn on the help menu there. We can change that. So right now it says deactivate automatic seed rate hitting U. So if we deactivate it, now we have to hit left shift J and N to change the seed rate manually. Um, and down at the bottom, you can see the rate. So 300 seeders per meter uh, squared, which is, uh, Let's go ahead and change it real quick. Shift J and N. So we can go up to 420 and then down to 180. So that's again, low, medium, high, or standard there, sorry. So low, standard, and high for seed usage. Or we can hit U again to have it set to automatic. So we're gonna plant wheat here. Um, so looking at the chart and wheat, it'll go ahead and automatically take everything on the way we need to. So we hit B, turn it on, hit B to lower it down. And it's just going to town. We're getting things seeded. You'll see as we go to different areas, so as we go across here, there should be a different soil type coming up where you're gonna see that auto rate change um, to a different rate here in a second. So we'll give it a second here. Should change here momentarily as we get closer and closer to it. There you go, you can see it's adjusting a little bit. Uh, high rate of seeds there, okay. And you can see it's kind of manually adjusting. Okay, now we're back down to the low. Uh, so we can hire a guy to do this if we want to. Now, if we look in the menu and we go over here, Again, to our seed rate, now it's gonna show you the seed rate. So this won't show up until you actually have done something on here. Um, so there you go, it's gonna show you the seed rate and that's gonna change again from low, standard, and high um, as far as everything goes for this specific crop type. So you can see going through um, that section of land there, which is the uh, loamy sand, it required a little bit more seeds as opposed to sanded loam. And the loam should require, I believe, uh, the lowest amount of seeds that could be wrong. I'm not looking at the chart right now in front of me. But yeah, so this guy's gonna keep doing his thing, get everything taken care of. Again, it's a lot easier to run these things on automatic, but you can do them manually if you'd like to adjust it. Um, but yeah, that's what I have everyone for, or that's what I have for you guys for this video uh, today. The next video will likely cover the nitrogen levels and all the ways to apply nitrogen. So stay tuned for that. But anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please drop a like down below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button up on the screen to join the Farmer Cop channel and turn on your notification bell so you don't miss any future videos I may post. This has been Farmer Cop. Thank you guys for coming and for watching.